Computer Rome has all these little unsettled territories across the map that you can colonize and take over for your own country if you meet certain conditions. There are three ways to colonize these locations. The first is through normal colonization, which can be accessed by clicking on one such region and using the colonize button if conditions are met. If you are close to meeting conditions but do not meet them, it will tell you what these conditions are. I'll show all of this off in this video. The second way is by constructing a border fort, which, for example, if you go to the Italic Tribes tradition, then you can see it right here under the Castra is Construct Border Fort. We'll go over that as well. And the third one is to be a migratory barbarian tribe and exercise your ability to essentially get up, leave your home behind, and go somewhere else that's unsettled, migrating and settling there. We're going to talk mostly about the first two today because this is just kind of a whole mechanic in itself. If you do want to see this as a guide sometime, feel free to ask and I can go over it then. But on the topic of colonization, if you aren't paying attention to colonization and you could do a normal settlement, you see we have picked Sirencia here to show this off today, you'll get a little banner up here at the top left that looks like a man with a donkey, I guess. If you click it, it'll bring you to a location that you can colonize. Now, it's also supposed to cycle you through ones you can colonize if you click through it. For whatever reason, at the start of the game, it's not registering that I can also colonize basically everything up to right here. So, how do you get to be able to colonize normally? This is not EU3 or something where you can sail across the ocean and colonize wherever you want. It has to be pretty relatively close to you. Here are the conditions that you have to meet. Take any settlement that you have in a region. For example, where we're probably, yeah, right here is where we are probably colonizing from. By land, Serapion here can colonize anything directly adjacent to it. Any location has this ability. Then, also, you can colonize by sea, and the way that works is it has to be within two sea tiles of your territory. So this is the sea tile that it is in, Serapion here. This counts as one. So over here counts as two. Up here counts as two. So Serapion can colonize anything in this little slice right here. Isinia probably counts as being up here. No, it counts as being right here. All right. Yeah, so it can reach over here as well. But as you see, we cannot colonize anything beyond that, anything that's in this one, because that would be within one, two, three. And so Serapion, being the first location here that can colonize, cannot reach that far. And so you might wonder, well, why can Serapion colonize, but not say Medrian, which is closer, and it would be within two of here? Well, it can, it just can't right yet. So if you look over here, if you're close enough to something that can colonize, you can see the requirements here. You see Medrian's right there, as well as Astro Chanda, which is right there. It's in this same little region right there. Both of those are within sea distance. It's not the port. You don't need a port. You need at least, or exactly, eight pops in order to colonize something else. You need eight pops in a region. See, this only has four, and this has six. Serapion is 14. That's why I said it's the first one we have that can actually colonize anything. So it can colonize all of this right here, but not this. But that is not all. There are more requirements. Even if you have eight pops, you may not be able to colonize because the pops living in that location, which you can click view pops info to see the info on who lives there, they need to meet some requirements. Out of all the pops that are there, not just eight, but out of all the pops that are there, once you reach at least eight, you need to make sure that the dominant culture is of an integrated religion, which includes your primary culture. They don't need to be the same culture, but if we look at culture, we see we have Cyrensians as our primary integrated culture. If I integrated Libyan as well, then they would count if we had five Cyrensians, two Libyans, and one Punic, we would only have one unintegrated if I integrated Libyan, so we'd have seven integrated between these two, and then one unintegrated. That would be good enough to do a colonization. But there are also more requirements. The state religion 
in these regions must be dominant. There are no integrated religions, there's just the state religion and other religions. So whatever your state religion is, which for us is Hellenic, that must be the dominant one. So if we have eight pops, then you would want at least five of the pops there worshiping your primary religion in order to meet this requirement. Additionally, another requirement is that if you look at the pop classes down here, we have nine citizens, three slaves, two freemen, you'll experience a lot more slaves on a frontier usually, especially when you take nations over, it'll be where you encounter this problem. You need to have at least one pop that is not a slave. That pop does not need to meet any of the other requirements. It just needs to have one pop that is not a slave. So you could have a freeman of an unintegrated culture, and then that would work just fine for meeting this requirement. So you could have seven slaves of primary culture, primary religion, and you could have one freeman of a non-integrated culture that worships a different religion, and you would still be able to colonize. Then when you do finally go ahead and hit colonize, it would send that one freeman, whether it's integrated, whether it worships your religion or not. And if you have multiple freeman or above when this time comes, it's going to take one pretty much at random. It's not going to prioritize integration or otherwise. It's just going to take one out of the pile and throw them over there to go colonize, which as you could see would also net you more population. Five out of nine are already here. So if I sent that one over, I would get these five in addition to the one I'm sending over living here. I would expand my pops by that much, even though none of these are integrated. So I would go ahead and hit colonize. And it says exactly what we're going to send. A Hellenic Cyrensian citizen. That is what it has selected from Serapian. So we'll send it. And now we own it just like that. Might look more clear on this map mode. This is unsettled. This is now settled. So we just got five pops. We just sent one of our own here. We now own this, can build here. It is ours now. It is ours, and nobody can uncolonize it from us. Not without war, anyway. Now, if we look over to the next settlement, we will see that we cannot colonize it because Serapian no longer meets the requirements. Not any of the ones I've listed, but one additional one that only takes effect once you've already done a colonization. As you can see here, Serapian recently supported a colonization. It cannot do another one before a certain date. Basically, one year. One settlement, one territory can only settle one territory per year. So if you're doing all your colonization from Serapian, it would take you one, two, three, four, five, six years to settle all of this. But you can speed this up still by simply making sure that other locations meet the requirements. So for example, if I wanted desperately to colonize something else here right now, what I could do is I could go to the, well, it could be any location within range, but for example, to Kainon here, I could go to the population and I could move pops. This is a paid, I believe it's usually five gold, but as you see, surplus of vegetables and capitals, certain things can actually make it cheaper. But you pay a preset amount of money to move slaves. This might be hard to read, but just note these are all slaves. This is the religion that the slave worships. This is the culture that the slave is. So you'll need to know which one is integrated and which is your primary. You have to know that information. It's not just going to tell you here. You can see what resource they're working on where they already live and how many pops are located where they already live. And you can see where they live right here. So where you're moving them from. You've already selected where you're moving them to. So I can see that we have two megalithic Libyans in Serapian here, and I could move them over here. All I need to do is get the pops here up to eight and meet all those requirements I talked about earlier. So if I look and I see, okay, we have two Hellenic Cyrensians. We have one Punic Canaanite. We see we have a two to one ratio right now of integrated pops. So I know we're going to need probably three more of these. And do we have a Freeman? Yes, we have two citizens and a freeman. So we know sending slaves will be fine because we won't just have only slaves, so this will definitely work. So we would need three more integrated culture units to actually do this. So I can see right here at, where is this? Right up here in this city, 
which could probably do a colonization of its own, but I'm just trying to demonstrate something. We have four Hellenic Cyrensians. So if I move one, two, three, now we have six pops, and I know that five of them are integrated and of the correct religion. Now I could take things that are not like that. For example, these two megalithic Libyans from Serapian. Now be careful because it does move around sometimes when you cross certain numbered thresholds. But we'll move those two. As you see, it just popped up because now we meet the requirement. So we'll go ahead and hit that. It's encouraging me to do this one, even though I could also do this one or these ones. So make sure that you check before you do this in case you want something in particular, like a certain resource or whatever. Like I could just jump ahead here right now and then colonize this. Now what's really cool is that if I met those requirements here, because this is directly connected to this by land, then I could start colonizing over here either. And because it's in a closer sea region, I could colonize over there. The same thing really goes for these as well if you're talking about by sea. But if we look at moving pops here, we'll see our options are far more limited. I can only move from the locations that we had here at the start and the one that I colonized earlier. So this is something that's really confusing and gets a lot of individuals and it's what really makes this a headache. You cannot move slaves from super far away just as you cannot colonize from super far away, but it's even more restricted for movement. So if I look over here, you'll see it's the same thing. If I Medrian, same thing. You need to quite literally be at the border leading to another location if you want to have more options on where to pull from. But as you see, it's still limited. I can only pull from places that directly border by land if we're starting to reach into a different province. So, for example, if I want to get some units from here where we have a ton of pops, but we're not connected to the right sea lane here to actually colonize that far, then I would have to come to somewhere that borders into this province like Kainon that we just used to colonize and I'd move from basically up here for example where we have not a whole lot that can be moved because not a lot of slaves are over there but I could do basically a collection of slaves just move a bunch of slaves here from all around this province and I could even change some more in from further away where we have way more pops then I'd have to pay again to actually move them into the correct province and then I can move them even further down the line. Basically, you have to pay more and more and more the further you want to move them. Unfortunately, you can't just move them and pay more in one button press. You have to actually logistically chain them yourself. It's a little tedious, but that is how it works. As you can see, moving slaves costs a lot of money. Colonizing costs 10 money each time you do it. And now you can understand why there could be all these uninhabited locations on the map that just simply do not get colonized very quickly. It's expensive, you need to meet a lot of requirements, and even a player dedicating himself to it will be burning through his entire treasury to pull it off. Additionally, you can run into certain limitations if you're colonizing down a path, for example, and then that location just doesn't have anything higher than a slave, which as we can see, it usually does, but it does happen sometimes, then you would not be able to actually colonize any further locations from there because you would not have the ability to do so and you cannot forcibly move non-slaves all you can do is build up a region and hope that they move there for the opportunities that await them there and that's how colonization works that's everything that you need to know about normal colonization let's talk real quick about tradition so for the italic tribes traditions which you'll have if you're playing Rome or anybody over here, or if you manage to integrate any Italic culture, then you will get access to Italic tribe traditions if you unlock it through a connected tree. Once you do have it unlocked, you need to work your way down by earning military XP, and then eventually you will get the Construct Border Fort ability. This is a unit ability, this is essentially, if we were in the military, if we raise our levies, for example, we look at our levies, you see there's all these buttons right here. The closest thing that we have right now is just military colonies, which is not exactly it, but it looks pretty similar. What constructing a border fort will do, however, is if you have a legion, for example, and you border, let's say, one of these locations, I could move those units right here and then press the button that would appear 
saying to construct a border fort. This is going to construct a fortress there automatically. It's going to cost you 1500 manpower to do this. It's not like normally building a border fort, but you'll spend the manpower and you'll get control of the region immediately without transplanting anybody over there. And you will create a free men pop of your primary culture and religion out of thin air by doing this sort of thin air. You're spending manpower to essentially transplant your own soldiers there is kind of what it's simulating and you get a fortress now this could be very expensive but it can be used pretty strategically let's say you bordered up to here you wanted to claim this put a fort here to defend it and everything over here stop anyone from spilling through that would be a really good opportunity to do that and you can spam this if you have enough manpower you could just take that legion go around constructing border forts over and over and over again so long as you can afford it you're going to be using the normal colonization however way more than you would ever get to use the border forts thing and it's not even entirely worth it to go through the whole fortress process there but that is everything you need to know that is how colonization works if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and if you have any other suggestions for any guides you'd like to see on imperator rome please let me know that in the comments below as well this is part of a long playlist of guides i am making this is number 11 or something now you can find that in the description below for now though thank you guys very much for watching and i hope to see you on another video